It's a common knowledge that everyone has a mind, right? Is it, however, reasonable to believe this common sense? Let's find out with people also at. Hello, welcome to What People Also Ask, where I search something seemingly obvious and share with you some of this part, aka People Also Ask, which is a feature telling you what other people are searching on Google that relate to your query. Today's keyword is problem of other minds and solipsism. We will discuss what it is and who proposed it and is there any argument against it. So let's start with our first part. What is the problem of other mind in philosophy? Google's auto-generated answer is linked to an entry titled Problems of Other Mind, published on Encyclopedia Britannica, which is a general knowledge English language encyclopedia. According to this entry, the problem of other mind is the problem of justifying common sense assumption that other beside oneself have mind and are capable of thinking or feeling similarly to oneself. You might think, why do I need to justify my belief that other people have consciousness and mind? Isn't it just like obvious? I won't be so sure. When you think about it clearly, all you can observe is actually just other people's behavior. You are actually not able to observe other people's subjective experiences, which we call consciousness or mind. Since you cannot observe it, how do you know it exists? So here's our next part. What are some solutions for problems of other mind? Okay, so this PA is actually one of the Google's blooper because Google's auto-generated question was actually who create the problem of other mice? While Google's auto-extracted answer was about who um, proposed a solution for the problem of other mice? Let me remind you that Google's PAA is auto-generated, so sometimes this happens. Anyway, this article titled The Problem of Other Mice published by Philosophy Talk, which is a website affiliated with the Samian Talk Radio program. This program deals with the fundamental problems of philosophy and with the work of famous philosophers, especially the one that relate to our day-to-day -day life. One solution to the problem of other minds was proposed by John Stuart Mill, a 19th century empiricist, argues that because one's body and outward behavior are observably similar to others' bodies and behavior, one is justified by analogy in believing that others have feelings similar to one's own. It's like, you are a human like me, you behave similarly to me, and you speak in a similar manner to me. I have a mind, isn't it reasonable to assume that you do as well? But here's the problem, this conclusion is actually based on a very small sample, only one, aka you. Luckily, there's another solution called inference to the best explanation. According to the Rutledge Encyclopedia of Philosophy, Inference to the best explanation is the procedure of choosing the hypothesis or theory that best explains the available data. The factors make one explanation better than other may include depth, comprehensiveness, simplicity, and unifying power. Applies to the problem of other minds, we can rationalize it in this way. I understand that my own mind explains a lot of my behavior that is influenced by the outside world, and the way it causes me to behave is responsive to the information it picks out about the world. So it is almost certain that everyone else works in a similar manner. So what if this still cannot convince you? Then you might be a solipsist. Let's talk about our next part. What does solipsism mean in philosophy? Because Google takes the answer to this query from a dictionary site called Merriam Webster, which is currently owned by Encyclopedia Britannica, the answer is short and simple. Solipsism is a theory holding that self can know nothing but its own existence, and that the self is the only existent thing. Obviously, many people do not want this idea to be proven correct because it's kind of a scary series and by a lot of people I mean just you if this series is true. So, what is the argument against solipsism? Google's auto-generated answer is linked to an article titled Is there any philosophical rebuttal to solipsism? A series that self is all that you can know to exist or are you just all figments of my imagination? Published by The Guardian. This article includes various arguments against solipsism. It's a long and interesting piece, so I won't be able to go over every point. I highly recommend reading it yourself, but for the time being, I can share one of these arguments mentioned in this article with you. The concept of self only exists if other exist. 
but completely solipsistic being existed, it would never be able to consider the concept of solipsism. In order to do that, it would have had to become aware of itself and develop an identity include an I concept. To do that, it would have needed to exist outside own being and consider itself from another point of view. But there is no other or other's point of view in solipsism. It follows that a truly solipsic being had no self because it has no other self to define itself. I'm kind of convinced, but it can probably refute the solipsism, but still won't solve the problem of other minds because other people might exist, just do not have mind. Today, or maybe just myself, learned what is the problem of other minds, what is solipsism, as well as their corresponding solutions. If you made it to the end of the video, chances are that you enjoy learning what people also ask on Google. But let's face it, reading PAA yourself will be a pain. So here's the deal, I will do the reading for you and upload a video compiling some fun PAAs once a week. All you have to do is to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you won't miss any PAA report that I compiled. So just do it now. Bye!